Good morning, everybody. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be locating out where the uh, distribution box is for this system. Get it all dug up and see what we're working with. So, as you can see right here, what I'm doing is I'm marking out all of the edges of the box. The reason I want to do that is so that way I know where to dig. So, that probe that you see right there in my hand, that's what we refer to as a T probe from the TNT Tools. I will go ahead and link their website below, but this thing is actually insulated so that way if I probe through an electric wire or whatever, I'm good to go. So we see here that we have all of our edges marked with these flags, so I'm going to go ahead and get our tarp out so that way I don't just leave a huge giant dirt patch in the middle of this guy's yard. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the sod. So I like to take the sod out in four pieces. And the reason I like to do this is so that way when I get done, I can put the sod back on and have a little bit less disturbance to their actual, you know, yard. This particular yard did not have as great of a uh, texture, right? There's a lot of dead spots. So no big deal, but we also don't want to leave the system looking worse than the way that we found it. So the dig itself wasn't too, too bad. There, were, there was not that much rocks inside of it. The uh, recent rains in our area have definitely helped loosen everything up a bit, but not too bad. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just watch as I get this all dug up, and I'll see you on the other side. Alrighty, so we got all the dirt off the top, so we can see here that we got all four of our edges. Just got to clean it up just a little bit more, and then we can actually pop this bad boy open. What is a distribution box is what you might be asking. Uh, they're actually going to be a little diverter that makes it where as the water goes into the tank, that water will overflow out of the tank into the back line and directly into the distribution box. The goal of the distribution box is actually to equally disperse the liquid into all of the drain fields. So in this particular circumstance, we're going to have two drain lines. And we can see here that we're about to pop this bad boy open. We'll actually see what's inside. This hook that I'm using is also going to be a TNT product. You can see here that we got the two, two drain lines. So as we look inside of this box, we can see that a little bit of roots and soil is coming in from where the box wall is and the uh, drain line pipe comes into it. So these boxes in our area generally last about 20-ish, maybe 30-ish years. So we'll see it happen quite a bit where as these things age, uh, roots and soil will start to work its way in. The most common place is going to be right where the pipe comes into the box, but sometimes it'll actually come through the side wall of the box itself. Sewer gases are super corrosive and it'll basically chew up the concrete until eventually it just kind of fails and then everything can work its way through. So we're going to take the camera right now and we're going to go ahead and take a peek inside these pipes and see what, what's going on. A drain field in our area generally is going to be about two to three feet wide, six to ten feet deep, and it's going to be backfilled with number two limestone and a perforated pipe. So we can see here as we go through, we have all these perforations in the pipe. That's how the water, as it enters into the distribution box and into the drain fields, that's how it's actually going to end up in the soil, right? So each of those perforations lets it to where the uh, water can go into the stone. The stone opens up the soil to give the water the ability to go through the soil. The soil captures that nastiness and then nature cycle to basically repeat itself. So we're going to watch on the bottom left as far as we're going in. Uh, so we can see right here that we're about 35 feet into this trench. Uh, so we're going to go all the way to the end to make sure that we don't see any kind of breaks, roots, or any kind of like weird shenanigans going on the pipe. All 
All right, so now we're getting close to the end of the trench. So we can see right here that we see the rocks. That's the end of our line. We see that we made it about 70 foot and eight inches. That lines up with what we would see on the records. The permit said that it was a 70 foot trench. So we're gonna head and pull that out. And we're gonna go take a look at the next trench line. Ideally, we should see an identical version from drain line A to drain line B. The reason why is because the distribution box should be evenly dispersing that liquid between both of the trenches. So as we go, we can see a little bit of a compression and a slight shift with some minor root intrusion. So generally, whenever I see this happen, that's going to be something that happens during the installation process and the backfill of the, so uh, of the soil, right? Not the end of the world. It's basically just an additional perforation in an already perforated pipe. But it's super important to kind of pay attention to if you already have a compression and you start driving like let's just say a ford f-150 over top of your trench lines you could potentially push that pipe all the way the rest down and then guess what now it won't actually drain so we're going to continue just like we did on the other drain line going all the way through to see what else do we see both of these drain lines look pretty good not any real stagnant water sitting in there meaning that everything's draining correctly the, there is a little tiny tree uh, closer to the end of this trench, so that might be accounting for why we're seeing some of these roots in the pipe, but nothing super, super crazy. And so we're going to continue all the way down until eventually we get to the end of this trench where we see the stone, just like we saw the last one. Pull that back out and go ahead and get ready to fill this hole in. Overall, these drain lines look like they're in pretty good shape, and we generally will recommend to homeowners that whenever you first move into the house, you should get the drain lines looked at, scoped, just to make sure everything's working. And then every five to ten years, you might want to have somebody else come take another look just to make sure that everything's still doing what it's supposed to do. In our area, it's usually assumed that drain fields will last roughly 30 to 40 years, right? If you take care of your tank, pumping it out regularly, you should be able to get a, a far longer uh, lifespan. With people who are pumping every year, not putting stuff down there that doesn't belong down there, and they're also making sure that they have all of the natural groundwater, such as like their stormwater runoff, etc., pushed away from the drain fields. I've seen these things last 50 or 60 years, right? So we're going to go ahead and fill this hole back in. I usually will like to try and tamp it down uh, once we get to about three or four inches worth of dirt. No matter how well you do this, you're always going to have a little bit of a, uh, a hump in the yard. But I try my best to knock it down. Uh, it will eventually settle up over the course of a few months. We can see here that we got it all kind of squared away. Um, next step is just to get that sod back on there, make sure everything's working good take the flags, mark where the drain lines were, uh, so that way I can actually measure out and draw this person a new sketch of their system. In our area, most counties are gonna require an updated sketch of a septic system if you plan to put like a shed, a pool, or an auxiliary dwelling unit on the property. If you enjoyed content like this, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button as I have more content posted daily on the world well and septic. Till next time, guys.